Okay, so I'm back and let me go. Okay, so also some key ingredients are going to be um, dimethicone 500. This is thinner than the like dimethicone 1200, but it's a silicone conditioner and emollient. Okay, and it gives you the usage percentage here. Uh, 1 to 20 percent up to 50 percent is possible in your products okay and it tells you what kind of things that you use it in or products you use it in so and what it is it gives you a nice breakdown that's why I love making cosmetics because making cosmetics in formula sample shop where I got this calculator from and they're always sweet I call them a lot they're always sweet and um, I'll link it in the description none of these links are affiliate this is all your own okay so i don't have any discount codes so make sure you check the website but anyway we're using dimethicone 500 we're using um oxy dc so this is basically basically an emollient an oil free emollient a solvent and a moisturizer here it gives you the percentage you can use two to twenty percent because people ask a lot like what can percentage can i use of preservative or what percentage can i use of um you know whatever it gives you here on these sites so you're not going over the recommended amount we're also going to be using sorbitin oleate okay this is a vegetable based water and oil emulsifier okay so it gives you that same information and then we're going to be using vitamin e the alpha to coferol okay this is very specific which vitamin e we're using because this is not the acetate acetate means oil okay so this one not <laughs> not your regular vitamin e oil because sometimes people use like vitamin e oil no this is very specific okay and it just has some antioxidant properties okay and so and again talk about preservatives a lot we're going to be using preservative cap too so it gives you your use usage percentage <laughs> Um, and it just tells you so in a pressed powder, which we're going to be pressing, you gives you your percentage, but in a loose powder, like something like, um, like, you know, a loose powder for makeup, that's what you could use. You're also going to need pressing ribbon. Okay. To press this, you're going to need a pressing tile. Okay. In the pressing tile, you'll see it's like a little clear tile. So let me just click on one of these. And you don't have to use TKB. There's other sites that have these same tools. But you'll see the tile. It looks like a stamp. But you would press your, your eyeshadows with that. And I like to leave it to dry a little bit too, you know. And you're pressing tins. Okay, so if you don't have a pressing machine, <laughs> this is how you could do it the old school way. And this is basically you can do this for highlighters. You know, this is this is your thing. So if you want to get, you know, your um, start your own and have your highlighters and all that, this is what you can do. Also, here's a tip: if you buy these blank, you can get they're called transfer labels. Okay, so. I know you probably see the vinyl ones, but you can go on AliExpress and get you some transfer labels for cheap, and you can put your transfer lab transfer labels on here, and they'll look just like you got it, pretty much just like you got it done yourself, okay? So that's what you can do, and you can put ones on the back for the colors, and then you can put one for the ingredients, and you can get a bunch made on AliExpress, so that's a little tip. So anyway, let's go to this calculator. So... I wrote down we want to make two ounces of just eyeshadow, our eyeshadow, okay? So we're going to have phase A. Phases for your products really help because these powder products, if we just mixed everything in one, it would not go well. We need to separate our powders, our liquids, or our hot, excuse me, our hot ingredients, and then our cool ingredients, okay? So we're going to start with our eyeshadow base. Remember, the total ingredients are 95% the percentage. However, oops, that should be 27. Okay. 
okay that should be 27 percent however if you read your cosmetic guides from the fda that i'll link in the description it tells you that if you have things like preservatives or like flavoring you use the recommended percent but that doesn't necessarily have to be calculated in your total because there's such a light molecular weighted like ingredient so you can add it or you cannot i use i'm using one percent because that's the recommended usage it's 0.5 to 1.5 percent so we're going to use one percent of preservative cap two and that could be like a drop or two okay just if you want to weigh it you can use the weigh books and weigh it but it's kind of hard to measure that but it's possible okay so phase a is going to be our powder so we have a 3.5 percent you can also if you wanted to turn it into grams you can press g calculate it into grams but we're not going to do that for today we just want two ounces and it's going to automatically convert into grams okay so that's 3.5 percent of our eyeshadow base that's the amount of ounces grams milliliters cost per gram total cost okay so that's what we're going to do and then you can sit and you can add in your 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 numbers you know it already has a pre-made formula in here for that oops it already has a pre-made formula in here to do that so when you get this calculator or if you want to make your own you can figure it out and how it converts okay and if you like if you were in school it gives you the logic here okay of why they can go and automatically convert here okay so the cost per ounce it will give you this here, okay? The total cost, that's how much it costs is just to buy like a full thing of eyeshadow base. And these are for the lowest quantities on those sites that I showed, okay? So rose talc is 165 per like sample pack, okay? That's its total cost, okay? That's the cost per ounce. So in total, it cost us, and remember, just because we brought all this ingredients doesn't mean to make two ounces it costs us sixty four dollars and ten cents i'm not even including shipping here because it varies and i couldn't do shipping for the video because it would affect that okay but this total cost is going to be you can reuse these ingredients over and over all right so that's why we need the cost in grams i mean sorry in ounces and grams to break it down for this specific product okay it also gives you a markup percent Okay, you can calculate that here and how much you want to sell it for retail. So if let's say if it costs us three dollars and fifty cents to make, we need to add three dollars and fifty cents to that. Okay, plus another three dollars and fifty cents. So we need to be able to make that product again and make the profit. Now you don't have to add another additional three dollars and fifty cents, okay? but you need to market up however you want that's why i always say your product should never be five dollars unless you can afford it to be it's very hard to do that unless you can produce in bulk quantities and get bulk quantity ingredients okay and it'll it shows you here what do you want to sell it for okay so if it costs us let's say three dollars and fifty cents to make this lip gloss we need another three dollars and fifty cents to be able to make it again like i said Okay, so that's seven dollars. Okay, that's not even including how much it's going to cost to ship our products. You got to add. I mean, all these things you you can figure out. You can add additional cells here to figure out how you want to do that. But this is just giving you a, an idea. I know, and if you go into Shopify, it shows you what your markup should be, and it automatically uh, compounds, computes that. But here, you can lay it all out for yourself very nicely to do that. Me personally, if it costs me seven dollars to well three dollars and fifty cents to make these eyeshadows, and I want to be able to make it again for three dollars and fifty cents, okay, and then I want to profit, I would sell this probably for uh, this eyeshadow palette for nine ninety nine, probably ten fifty, ten ninety nine, okay, because then I would make a profit of three dollars and ninety nine cents. If I sold forty of these, I would pocket. Buy one dollar and fifty nine cent point sixty. Okay, I'm just giving a base, art um, a base a, a base um estimate. Okay, and remember, since we already are cut, we're already calculating in enough money to be able to make it again. Okay, we can we can put money to side of what we make. Now that doesn't mean go spend it, but you see what I mean. You have your what it costs you to make it, how it's gonna, how much it's gonna cost you to make it again, 
and what you want to profit for that. Okay, you can think of it like that and break it down three ways. Okay, and here it go, it computes everything for you. Okay, and again, I I'm not adding everything in here because this is going to be on your own individual individual use. 